Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo 992 and today we're back for another brand new video. Now the voice might be gone, but thankfully the happiness, joy and the winning start to the 2024 season isn't troops as we went to Paisley, we went to a difficult venue versus a difficult side in difficult conditions and managed somehow, some way to drag that game over the line and collect all three. No, it wasn't the prettiest game of football. It certainly wasn't comfortable. The stress that I've endured nearly finished the ticker. Probably took a couple years off the life. Helped grow some greys. The arse was clattering, but it's all a complete irrelevance because at the end of the day, the only thing that matters is the scoreline when the whistle actually goes. And by hook or by crook, by pretty or ugly, all that matters is the three points. And ladies and gentlemen, we managed to get them. And I know what everyone's thinking, how long is it going to be in this today's video before CJ mentioned this is the type of games that win you trophies, this is the type of games that win you silverware at the end of the season, and you're absolutely right, you're about 15, 20 seconds in troops, because this is the game. We will not remember anything for this game. Not even Butland's couple saves, we'll not even remember Dessers' goal in the game. All this game will be remembered by the time the season goes down as maybe an important game where we played crap, but we got the three points and that gave us the platform to go and do what we needed to do. It happens through the season, you're never always going to play pretty, it's never always going to be perfect, it's not going to be like how the manager draws out. Sometimes you get in a game, get in a condition, get in a venue, and it's a hard hard graft and where I give credit to these players where again the performances weren't outstanding or great and I feel like everyone besides maybe Butlin, Lundstrom and Dessers kind of were off the game today if we're being brutally honest to everyone who went out on the actual part. The thing I will give them credit for when it wasn't gone their way, when it wasn't all sunshines and rainbows, where I've seen this team throw points away or their heads drop or them give up or get frustrated, maybe not give up, but you know what I mean, get frustrated, end up beating themselves. They stuck to the task, they saw it out and again got an absolute vital three points. But speaking of consistency, by the way, we shout out the Dumbarton video eventually hit over a thousand likes. Shout out to all your legends. So technically, we are on a 16 week streak of a thousand likes of videos. Thank you so much. It's absolutely absurd for a channel our size to be hitting those ridiculous numbers. Shout out to every single person who's currently watching in hell. If you want to try and help that streak continue, any like, any like or subscription would be greatly, greatly appreciated. Or if you want to wait to see if this video is worth it, that is fair enough, because there is a couple things in my mind, because this video could genuinely be 20 seconds long. See if I just said, up the road, three points. That's all that needs to be said, you know what I mean? But I feel like there is stories in games, and this is the type of game, the likes of Jack Butler maybe had never had the eye-watering save, or the big, oh my god, remember the save versus Hibs when it was 2-0, that ridiculous save. Remember the amount of 1v1 saves this guy's actually done all season long. He never had that moment, or that save in this game of football, but for me, this is the type of game the likes of Jack Butler really stands out, because as I mentioned, Everyone who really went out in that park, especially the outfield players, were slightly off their game. Just weren't they quite at it. But you know the one person who didn't drop their standards and who didn't lower down was Jack Butlin. Made the saves that he needed to be making and that might sound like a, a dumb saying to actually say. But we've all seen games, we've seen good goalkeepers get beat by silly things or the loser concentration get beat of this. Made the saves that it should have been made and he just brought a coolness and composure when the game needed to be slowed down. He slowed it down. When he needed to speed it up and shout and call people out or do a quick throw or a quick kick, he done that. I thought he managed the game perfectly like he was orchestrating an orchestra, ladies and gentlemen. And I give him a lot of credit for that because this is the type of game that we can see the last minute goal or we throw away or we end up folding. But I just think his coolness in the back line is so damn vital. And after watching so many minutes and so many of the same players... In previous season, this isn't a knock on McGregor, you know he is my favourite player of all time, right? This is not a knock on him, but anywhere else, you've seen it bleed in a games when it isn't got that, when we've not got that confidence, when it's no calm and composed. We have conceded silly goals. This game finishes 1-1, or maybe even worse than that, ladies and gentlemen, in previous seasons, but there's just something about this laddie that I can't quite put into words, that he just gives me the confidence that you know, when it is knit and gritty, when it is nippy bum time, I just believe in him that he'll drag us air the line. And I imagine there'll be a couple of people probably that stressed out to the max watching that game of football. You've actually forgot about the three big saves that Jack Butler made in this game, but the longer you watch today's video, the more you hear it. But 
I feel like we need to now talk about Big Dessers, you know what I mean? Because it's very easy to be critical of players and call out players and it's easier for clickbait and it gets, you know what I mean? Negativity always spreads more than positivity. That's not a comfortable thing to say, but we all actually know it. How many times you went to a restaurant and had a good food and you went on and gave a good review, but I'm pretty sure if they dropped the rat on your plate, you'd be right on it. It's just the way life actually is in the way the modern day is. Negativity spreads quicker or better than positivity. But for me, Dessers has been a positive aspect to our team over the last little while and I feel like he should get it because I know he missed versus Celtic that's what everyone's going to keep saying I get it ladies and gentlemen and he can't make it up to us until he then plays them again I get it but what he's doing right now ladies and gentlemen has been the difference between a 0-0 the day and a 1-0 the day the difference between one point and three points and sometimes you've got to give players credit for that and I feel like Dessers needs a wee bit of backing like that obviously he's, he's responding great to his song and that's great to see him have that moment but what I'm seeing for Dessers where he does frustrate me on some occasions is a player that doesn't hide right I've seen so many good players hide I've seen so many good ranger strikers that we love go in huffs and silk and throw the toys at the pram or let themselves go when it wasn't going all their way Dessers turns up to work pulls the old shin pad zone and goes out and gives it his best and again to variant levels a success. But for me, you look at what he's actually doing the day. He's won it and he's actually matched Morelos' total from last season in 16 fewer appearances. Now, people might say, well, Morelos was not great in his last year at the football club. Fair enough. Well, the season before that, Dessers is now just six goals away and 12 less appearances. So there is something in big serial Dessers and he's obviously got us a massive three points here. And I thought he's been really good when you look at his impact and his numbers since Clement has came in. Barring the Celtic game, which again, wasn't good enough, and I still didn't understand to this day, but we can't always judge people in their worst moments, you've got to give them a chance for redemption, and you're looking at a guy that is leading the line and scoring big goals, and not only is he scoring goals by the way, he's scoring defenders, which I greatly appreciate. But I think it's time to transition into the game recap, because again, this isn't the type of game where I could speak about A, B and C, A, B and great and having minutes and on this, because it wasn't that type of game, you know what I mean? The performances just won in there, barring maybe a couple. The one that did interest me actually before I get into it is going to be big Dujon Sterling, because he played as a left winger the day, you know what I mean? Rotation, people coming back for fitness, injuries, Rabi Matondo just back, I get it, it's smart management again for Claymont, and that was an interesting one because it never quite worked out for Sterling the day doing the left hand side, but he still grafted his absolute arse off and did and was involved in a couple big challenges and big moments of ball rotation and I'm not going to go after the laddie but what I will say is for Sterling, he has played 18 games for this football club so far this season, he's played right back He's played centre-back, he's played left-back, he's played centre-mid, and now he's played left-wing. All in 18 games for the young laddie who's recently joined the football club. I think you've got to praise that, and it shows you the trust that Clement's actually got to give someone like Sterling, who again is a full-back by trade, who's played less than 20 games, an opportunity to play at the left-wing. That's the trust that he has, and that's the future that he's got in the game. Jory Boes can play and impact games anywhere. And it's shown that, and he did offer his physicality, and I think that was needed because I feel like we went in in this game expecting St Mirren to be a lot more negative and maybe be a wee bit more scared of us than they actually were because they actually played a lot more forward. They tried to make some attacks, and again, they forced Butlin into making a couple saves. But before it really turned into what I would consider almost a St Mirren show for 30 minutes, by the way, which I didn't want to be saying, but if you watch the game, you know what I'm talking about. The 14th minute of the game came, and it gives a wee bit of shout-out to Lunny again for the exact same thing what he'd done versus Hibs. Clearly, it's a tactic now. Moving in to the middle and then getting someone to peel away. It was great movement. It was great play. It was a great chip for Lunny to Dessers. And to be fair, what Dessers does right here, ladies and gentlemen, is shows Great composure, he goes round the goalkeeper, it's instinctive, he's no got time to think about it and he rolls it into the back of net. He's chasing that ball, he's got to touch it to get away from the keeper and then he's got an easy goal and it just shows you that he's an instinctive style striker. I feel like if he played him through there, he's probably running through over thinking that and either hitting it straight at the goalie or hitting it actually. But because he's had to take the touch, he's then done everything, he just has to roll it into the net and again score the defender as well and that shows you again he's maybe got the old Kenny Millerisms you know what I mean instinctively great when he's got time 
barking. And when that first goal went in, I went, right, because it's been an ugly 15 minutes of the game, right, let's just take the lead now, let's roll all over them, let's get that second goal kill this game off. But it was St Mirren that responded. I mean, Elvis ain't dead, I heard him on the radio, that's all I heard the day for Sky. Elvis, Elvis, Elvis troops as the ball goes down the left hand side gets whipped in Suter gets caught under the ball it falls to Elvis who tries like a kind of volley-ish type thing but it's a good comfortable save for Butland but again a save that required concentration not to gamble too early and just get the old pause on it and after a really poor passage of play where it was so sloppy and so much of a slog to watch St Mirren should be level as again they get doing Tavernier side who never had a great day either by the way they whip in that floated ball John Suter, he does it, doing, he cushions it, doing into his own six yard box where it drops to Elvis again, who thankfully scuffs it air the friggin' bar, or that was an absolute howler and a mess Rangers goal of all time. That's the goals we throw away and give away in previous seasons, and then we were lucky this time as the heater comes in, just get that away, John, look at the cinder block, man, put it away, he seedered it in. TZ and Box has dropped right to the St Mirren player and when it went right at the bar I went right, I'm nervous, but maybe, just maybe, the luck swears the day. And after a real spell where St Mirren was pinging the ball and playing the type of football I expected us to be playing this afternoon, Tavernier ends up hitting a, a kind of shot from about 35 yards out, out nothing after it sort of rebounds off Gogic that ends up hitting the outside of the post. That was the closest we came to making it to in the first 40 minutes of this game. But again, right after that, St Mirren got on the ball. St Mirren looked the dangerous. A wee bit of flick on as they get a throw down the right hand side again of Rangers. The flick on. Golton needs to be better here in the air as well. It's so infuriating how badly we crave a dominant in the air centre half. See if we sign a centre back that's actually good in the air. This guy's going to stand out. We will be sitting in our seats, getting up, taking the shades off like a scene for Jurassic Park if we actually get a defender that can heed the ball because both Sope and Golson can he heed the football? Can he win enough heeders or they heed the ball wrongly and put it in? to their six yard box, it was infuriating to watch, it was clearly a target for St Mirren because they knew they had beef of them on absolute toast anyway, so we wait a flick on here, good touch for the St Mirren player and he rattles a shot that's well saved by the feet of Jack Butler, now it was originally given as offside but after the replay was shown it was shown it was onside so if Jack Butler doesn't make that great save with his feet, you're looking at 1-1 after a VAR checks that and it isn't offside as Golson's keeping the defender just on. It was rough. It was hard to watch. And I'm honestly trying to think of any chance we had to answer or respond to what St Mirren was doing. But the only thing that's in my noggin is five minutes after that, they get the ball doing again from the middle of the park as Raskin has robbed a possession. And they hit a curling shot that's low, that's well saved and comfortably saved by Butland. But again, it's another game where the goalies had to make a save as they are peppering the goal there in the ascendancy. And I was absolutely relieved at the time uh, the halftime whistle went. And you saw my thoughts if you follow me on Twitter or X or whatever it's called these days. We are far, far too narrow. I would love either Ross McCausland to come on, Rabi Matundo, or even Fabio Silva on left-hand side because it's too narrow. We've expected them to play a certain way. They're no Dana, and clearly the changes were made at half-time as Cantwell comes off at half-time. And so does Scott Wright, who, I'll be honest, I forgot was playing. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not being wide. I'm not picking on him. I'm just having to tell you. I, I forgot he was playing. See, when it came up that he was subbed off, I went, oh, aye, Scott's on. Scott was on. All right. That's a shame. He just never was involved in the game. And you want him to do well. You want him to get a chance. You want him to do this. But he's clearly just a cup merchant troops. As he was a completely invisible today. And I've seen a couple of people tweet me saying, Cantwell subbed off in back-to-back -back games at 45th minute. I would say it's actually just good management for Claymont and maybe we've been robbed of that over the last couple of years because usually we run our injured players into the ground and then they're missing for five months. That's not a build problem. That was a problem under Gio and Morelos and all that as well, Troops. We never seem to manage our injured players properly. Cartmill picked up a knock versus Hibs, was subbed off. Was good enough to get 45 mere minutes under his belt to develop him and get him back to that. He got that in this game and he's withdrawn as well. So, aye, I'm not saying that um, either player was dreadful or anything like that or Cantwell was so bad he had to be subbed off. I'd actually just say it's good management for Clement and maybe we're no use to that troops. But on came McCausland and on came Tom Lawrence and I was very interested to see how that would change because, again, the last 30 minutes of that first half was all St Mirren. It really, really was. I didn't want to be saying that, but it was. It was hard to watch, but... 
the changes, the tweaks at halftime, the, the, the wee asking of um, Sterling's position to be here rather than here. I thought it was managed again brilliantly for Clement as we instantly changed the game like that. When we came out in the second half, what was the St Mirren show became the Rangers domination over the next 25-30 minutes of the game as St Mirren never got a sniff. We started dominating possession, dominating in good areas. Lawrence should do a hell of a lot better as he gets the ball from Dessers who does well with his battle to Gogic. Him and Gogic was going back and forth Gogic got him a couple times, Des has got him another time, but I don't know how you feel, but Gogic is like the ultimate SPFL player in my opinion, hammer thrower, wears gum shields, throws himself about, gets stuck in, all physical, all battling, I think it's an example of what this game was, that St Mirren gave Gogic their Mary match, that's the type of game it actually was, it was nasty, it was a fight, but what I liked about Dessers is, it gave as good as he's got, again he never won, all the battles, but neither did Morelos, neither did anybody else leading the line. Sometimes they lost and Dessers did lose a couple of times, but there was other times he robbed them of possession, like when he got down the right-hand side, got in the channel, won him with the shoulder, tried to cut back, ended up being good defending for St Mirren. And again, the Lawrence shot where I said he should have done better. Dessers is great in front of Gogic, plays it to uh, Lawrence. La Lawrence outside the box, has to hit the target, but he hits it just wide. Now it's struck sweetly, like you could see it. It's like a curveball, so fair play to him. He's obviously got a lot of skill and technique, but I feel like he should at least be hitting the target, especially under these conditions, because the goalie never knew what was actually going in. Lawrence then just lumps a ball up in the air to Nabdi. Dessers brings it down, again, fighting and battling. I'm sitting saying, there he is. There's who I thought we were getting in the player profile. Using his strength correctly, he's getting used to it. He's not floating like a fish, like he's learned in his time in the Serie A and everything like that where he's felt contact and drop down it. He's remembering his strong troops, like what he was doing at Feyenoord. Hold them off. Wins it. Shifts on his left foot. Hits a shot. Now he does kind of scuff it a little bit, I guess you could say, but he's a striker. He's hitting it. I like to see that and it ends up hitting the post, meaning it's the second time we hit the post the day and Dessers does really well as well. Driving with the ball. Winning. Plays it to Ross McCausland, whose cross is quite poor, if I'm honest, but it drops to Tavernier. Tav whips it to the back post. Sterling's there. My hands are up. I'm thinking it's a goal. But big Sterling showing he's not got the attacking instincts as he kind of spoons the heater over. That's five. 10 minutes of domination for Rangers where it couldn't have been 2-0, it couldn't have been 3-0, it genuinely could have been 4-0, but ifs and maybes are always the stories and it just wasn't the story for that. And I really thought the inclusion of Jackal was clever in the middle of the park as well because after St Mirren made some tactical changes as we were just dominating them, Jackal came on and you know what you get for Jackal, when Jackal's on that part, Rangers are the best team they can possibly be in my personal opinion, it offers something that nobody else can actually offer, we're just a much more structurally sound unit in my personal opinion and I thought we just ran all over them like daft and that gave us the platform to create some of the chances we spoke about and obviously a couple of the other chances that we created in the rest of the game. My only real frustration ladies and gentlemen is again we didn't add the second and third because we had the opportunities but we're just making the wrong decision, it just wasn't the day for a multi goal scoring type of afternoon, it just wasn't. It was a 1-0 game written for the very start, that's what it felt like thankfully we got the goal no team could break it down after the more frustration is we did hit some delicious in swinging corners Tavernier who had again a bad day the day whipped in one that dropped in the fifth five yards out the goalies no came for it it is absolutely perfect but all our defenders all our attackers are standing the other side of the penalty spot I'm like what are we doing we are so drilled into doing it the other way. The players still aren't adjusted. That was a gorgeous in-swinger in. Son, I never spoke about Hibs. How much of a relief is it now to actually be dangerous? The Flickons, the Neelys, the, ch the, the, the chances we've created in the last two games alone from set pieces has resulted in more shots on target than the last 15 of outswingers. That is crazy when you put that into context how many game corners we've got in those 15 games I'm talking about so my only frustration was we didn't add it but I've kind of talked on it it just wasn't that day and as it gets later as it gets nervier as it gets scarier as Lawrence keeps wanting too much time on the ball Lawrence is lucky his name's no Todd Gantwell by the way because the amount of times he got the ball in dangerous areas and dallied and dallied and lost the football at the edge of the box or the one where he should have shot ended up taking too many touches and running it out to the left if his name was Todd Cantwell Twitter would be coming after him and we all know it would be ladies and gentlemen but Cantwell's not the flavour of the month right now 
Lauren says because he's just back for an injury and he's a very, very good player. But I did think it was interesting in the different perspectives. For me, Lawrence has got a hell of a lot more in his locker at that. Needs to get his ball away quicker for his feet and get back to hitting shots. And I'm sure that'll come as the more game time comes, etc, etc. But let's say the same for Cantwell who's been struggling with injuries as well. Let's treat them the exact same if they're going to be played in the exact same position. And aye, that was my frustration. Couple chances of that. And then when it gets to the last five minutes, you start getting nervy. And to be fair, I've been maybe critical of so Sope in this game and rightly so for that six yard header. I still didn't understand what he was thinking, but he made a fantastic block in the 85th minute. As the ball swirling about, <whistles> drops to Gogic, who's playing centre half, but is now up front for them. Yeah, it was that type of last five minutes. He ends up hitting a brilliantly brave block. I'm using his chest to hit it out for a corner. And from that corner, in swing a right to the back post where they end up rattling the bar. And I, again, we rode a luck in this game. But sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. And we were certainly no good today, if you catch my drift. But that was it, ladies and gentlemen. We saw it the last of the game. The post is out the closest they actually came on the bar, I should say. But we hit the post today. So if people want to say, well, it was a post that took it away from 1-1. Well, we hit the post twice as well. Let's be fair on that aspect. It was a 1-0 game, game written error. And I don't think too many people can complain. The only thing I did think was funny, by the way, is Robinson got booked. That's the St. Mary manager. He got booked. Just about the 91st minute or something like that, because he was screaming at the referee, that's never a foul, gone off, he's not. Then we actually see the replay back. Gogic is not only pulling Jackal back with him, he's kicked his heels three times and then bumped into the back of him. So he's fouled him four times, and that just sums up Scottish football that a manager can lose their mind that the referee will spin a yard away from it watching the rain player kick the living lumps out of our midfielder and then complain to the referees gave a foul. That's Scottish football in a nutshell, and that's what's encouraged the hammer throwing in. Aye, that was it, ladies and gentlemen. It finished Rangers 1, St Mirren nil or St Mirren nil Rangers 1 because of the way the game was in terms of the way they delighted with the win, delighted with uh, Butland, delighted with Dessers getting another goal and I'd love nothing more than this laddie to just keep churning out the goals, get more confident and tweak up and just get better because we've seen a lot of strikers struggle in their first years no be great rough projects blah 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 now he's at an age where he should be a lot more clinical than that but he's in the Rangers team now he's what we have right now so we need him to keep on scoring and Dessers delivers the points so what's your thoughts and opinions down there in the old comment section below that'd be greatly appreciated until the next video which might be soon might be soon ladies and gentlemen I've been CJ92 thank you so much for watching all the best and bye bye